What's going on? My name is Jared Fry. I'm from Queens, New York. I went to Sacred Heart University, graduated in 2007. Um, from there, I went overseas for eight years. Check out my story, what I went through, how I got there, and how I survived for so long on Overseas Diaries. I went to Macedonia for two years. Um, after Macedonia, I took a year off because I got injured. Went back to Macedonia, played for Team Finney in the International League. Um, after that, I went to Iceland, which was like straight scoring league. You could be Kobe, you could be Iverson, you, whatever you want, they need you to get up at least 20 to 30 points a game or you're going home, period. After that, I went to Australia, played for a team Adelaide in the NBL, and then I went back to Iceland to finish out. I did a half a season there and I was done. I definitely want to know the money. I want to know the coach, the team's morale. Um, and after that, okay, tell me about the town. You know, is it a big town, is it a small town? Those are, those are like the main things I need to know before I sign that contract and before I get on that plane. Because once you're over there and you sign that contract, they will keep you there. Some agents hit me up. The worst deals you think I had one. As soon as the season ended, I had, uh, uh, and I'm gonna tell everybody, that literally was on a contract. I think it's the first time I'm actually telling people because I was so embarrassed. At <laughs> one team in Germany, Dusseldorf, Pro A, I think. Yeah, Pro A. They said they was gonna pay for ele uh, all electricity, cable, car, and I was only gonna get a thousand dollars a month. And I just thought, hell no, All right? I can't, I can't take that. I can't take it. Um, so I waited, played the waiting game. I wound up going to um, Macedonia. They offered me 2,500, which is which was not not great, but I had to get started. You know, I had to get started. Took the 2,500, went over there. I said, I'll go. Start. See, the, now the good thing is about Europe. Um, so coming from small schools, you're probably going to take the hit where you get that low paying contract. But all my small school guys take it, right? Because you can double that in one year. So anyway, um, so the good thing is when you go over there and you have a good season, your, high, your college career is wiped out. So now you are based off of what you just did last year. You know what I'm saying? So I went over there, had a tremendous season. And then from there, you know, the money got better, got better, the league got better, opportunities opened up. And, um, you know, I had a solid, I had a solid career after that. But you got to take that first cheap contract. You got to take it. I think I was in Bulgaria. I, I sprained my ankle and they literally, they put, <laughs> this guy got a piece of bread and poured vinegar on it, vinegar and like the oil or something, put it on my ankle, wrapped it up in saran wrap, told me to sleep with it. It, it brought down the swelling, but I'm just like, God damn, like this is it? This is your treatment? You know what I'm saying? So literally, I was like, damn, I'm really in another country right now. Macedonia was nuts. I went to a small town where I, was, I don't think anyone's ever seen a black person. So they were calling me, any famous black guy you think of. I was Jordan, Shaq, Chris Brown, um, Martin Lawrence, Will Smith, Jamie Foxx, Jay-Z. I, I was all these guys. And, you know, at first it was like, it was annoying, but I, I understood it. Like, you know, like you've never seen a black guy. He's walking literally down your block. So it was just like, what the hell? This is crazy. So, um, after a while, I just embraced it. Like, all right, you know, that's, you're just as interesting to me as I am to you. Oh, Iceland was beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, they took great care of me. Car, house, big house, um, paid on time. They pay on time. Um, nightlife is great. It's only four hours of sunlight there a day. Four hours of sunlight, and it's and, it, and, it, and the sunlight is only from like eight, oh sorry, seven a.m. to eleven a.m. or something like that. After that, it's dark, which was crazy to me. Australia was nuts because they drive on the other side, so they drive on the what is it, the left side, and the steering was on the right. So they gave me a car, and I needed it because we lived like a couple miles from the arena. It's so like the first three 
weeks I got there, I would, <laughs> I would wait till like midnight, like one in the morning, and I would go out and drive. Like when no cars was out, I would go, I would drive, and just try to get familiar with it. And so I was comfortable enough to do it at daytime when all the cars were out. I thought I was gonna die. China. I ate, and, and you call me stupid. I had a burrito, I ate a burrito, which is a mix of everything. Um, caught the, probably the worst food poisoning you can get. I was going into the elevator, started getting dizzy, lightheaded. There was like three people in the elevator. Um, and literally, everything was getting faint. I started, vision was blurry. I'm like, yeah, I'm about to die in China. Um, so I'm like falling to the ground and I just remember this guy saying, did you eat the food here? And I'm like, what? <laughs> like what? So um, I felt throw up coming. I run up, run into the bathroom, threw up everywhere. And I just like laid on the floor. Um, they didn't want to take me to the hospital because they have different treatments that, they, that my body probably wouldn't react normally to. So I didn't go to the hospital. They made me just kind of flush it out on my own, which was, you know, which was crazy. So in China, I wound up eating a uh, steamed broccoli, steamed white rice and, and vegetables for the whole month. Ron Artest is a good friend of mine, Metal World Peace. And um, he was playing with me in a pro city and I was killing that. And he, at that time he was with the Rockets and I was supposed to have to work out with them. So I had the workout lined up. I'm like, oh, it's over. Like, I'm about, if I don't make it to the league, I'm going to, about to get paid overseas. You know what I mean? I get that NBA, you know, on my resume, even if I just worked out summer league, whatever. Broke my foot. Broke my foot. You know, they went away. Tried to come back too fast. Broke it again. So I wound up taking out for a year and a half. At that point, a lot of teams backed off. I had I had uh, two teams in Spain. I had a team in Germany interested at the time and then I had the Rockets workouts coming up. Um, so, you know, things were looking good, but I broke my foot, everybody backed off, obviously, nobody's gonna wait, it's too many players. Um, so, I wound up going to another team in Macedonia, because it's pretty much starting from scratch. My second year, 08, uh, I think 08 or 09, when the recession hit. Um, now, I didn't know there was a recession. But instead of saying that the team president was, we were losing games and he told the team, look, I'm not paying y'all until y'all win games. I said, okay. Um, they had a decent, um, relate. I had a decent relationship with the president because I was there last year and you know, I had a great season. So he continued paying me for the first four months. Afterwards, I went for the fifth month. He's like, look, I'm not giving nobody money until y'all start winning. I said, okay, waited a couple weeks, you know, cause you really don't want to leave with that money sitting there. Waited a couple weeks, he still didn't pay. I said, okay, it's time to go. So I just went over there, I'm like, look, man, I have no more money. I'm like, broke. And I mean, just telling him that because you got to do something on one of your players. He reached into his pocket, he gave me 500 euros. I took it and I said, I'm out. I said, I'm leaving. Left his house. Went, got my uniform, we had practice that night, dropped my bag off at the gym, pulled on my mouth. I went to the travel agency, <laughs> paid for them to push my flight up, and I left. Um, especially this one place, MZT, they play in the Adriatic League. Really, really good team. Um, we're in the game, they, I just hear something loud on the court. Boom, I'm like, what is that? I look down, it's just like a, one of their coins are like probably the size of a, um, a silver dollar. And it's worth like 10 cents, but it's like the biggest coin. I just see a whole bunch of them coming. Boom, 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 boom. And um, I kind of move like towards the baseline because you know, they're throwing it like towards the center of the court. I get close to the baseline and someone spits on me. Boom. Nice goop of spit right on my shoulder. I'm just like, damn, you know? so. One of the Americans on the other team was like, like, don't react. Like, just kind of you know, get out of the way, man. You know, and they brought us into the locker. Um, you react and it's over. You know what I mean? So, I actually, I started getting used to that. I was just like, this is the norm. Right? Somebody's going to throw something on the court. The game's going to stop. Firecracker or whatever. The M80s during the game. Boom. 
five packs on the court, left and right, toilet paper, the mess of the game. There were, some, there were a lot of games in Macedonia where uh, the team's fans would get suspended, so there'd just be an empty arena. We had a lot of games like that because the dudes were so wild. One of our boys, I'm not gonna say his name, I'm not gonna embarrass him. We go out, we go get some drinks, here's some girls, he's probably trying to impress them. Um, <laughs> so he like got a little section, whatever. This weird looking club, very weird looking place. I'm not big on using my credit card in places like that. He, they get his card and it was weird because the waitress kept asking, hey, just, okay, give me card, I'll get you, give me card, give me card. That's all she said, give me card, give me card. I have what you want, give me card. This is all she's saying, give me card. I'm like, geez, like what's this? He gives her the card. Um, whatever, we get a couple bottles in a little area, whatever. We leave, this is the next day. Had a great night, great time. He wakes up in the morning. Yo, she charged $15,000 on my card. I'm like, what? Yeah, she took my card for 15 grand. I'm like, 15 grand? It's, it's, the bottles were probably like $300 most. In Europe, it's a little cheaper. $15,000. I'm like, all right, well, let's go. We go back, drive to a place. Place is closed. <laughs> Shut down. <laughs> Things shut down. Not closed. Like, we're closed till 7 p.m. Closed. Shut down. Gate. Boom. This is no longer open. Life after is, especially like if you're making just enough to hold you for like a couple years. Like, if you're not making lifetime retirement money, yeah. You need to start preparing, bro, because that money goes fast. But looking back at it, if, if, if I could talk to my, the old me when he was over there, I would have prepared for uh, life after basketball immediately. You know, it, and it takes time because you really don't know. First of all, you don't know when you, you're going to be done playing and you really don't know what you're going to be doing after basketball. You know, sports is such a Sports dominates your life so much that you don't have time to think, you know? But you do get time overseas because you practice twice a day, um, which which takes up only four hours of the day. I tried to do a couple a couple temp jobs, but my skills, I I've been out for nine years. So my skills were underdeveloped. You know, I wasn't typing at, at the speed that you should be typing at. I wasn't familiar with the new Excels, the new programs. So um, a lot of jobs wasn't, big on you know taking somebody that's been living in another world for nine years so um i got a chance to see, see family who i haven't seen and then i um after that i got tired of sitting around and went and got into education field which is like perfect for me thanks for checking out my story on overseas diaries i'm currently in south florida training and coaching you can reach me at jfryhoops.com or you can check me out on facebook at jared fry see you around